Welcome to Geology, a channel dedicated to biology or the study of life. Today we're going to talk about a situation where, for example, we have two pea plants with us, uh, where we are looking at the Mendelian trait of their height. So in the Mendelian pea plants, the uh, height or uh, the feature for tallness is expressed by the dominant allele, which is uh, um, represented by capital T, and the dwarfness by the recessive allele, represented by small t. Now, we have two plants. If we were to find out the genotypes of these plants, say plant A is the tall one, and plant B is the short one, so the genotype of plant A could be either capital T, capital T, or capital T, small t. But do we know for sure? Well, not yet. For the cap, uh, plant B, since it is uh, representing or displaying a recessive character, the genotype has to be small t, small t. Now, how do we determine the exact genotype of the plant A? So this is where a test cross comes into play. A test cross is a cross between an organism whose genotype is unknown to that of an organism which displays a recessive phenotype. That means it has a homozygous recessive genotype. The intention of doing this cross is to find out the unknown genotype of the plant which is uh, displaying the dominant phenotype. Now the example that we started talking about, if we have to find out the genotype of the tall plant, it could either be a heterozygous tall capital T small t or a homozygous tall capital T capital T. While doing a test cross, we will cross both the uh, different types of uh, genotypes and then come up to see how the offsprings look like and from the offsprings we are going to identify the genotype of the parent so let's see how it works in option one we assume that the plant a has a genotype capital t small t so it is heterozygous and uh, the genotype of the dwarf plant is small t small t the gametes which the tall plant produces is of two types, capital T type gametes and small t type gametes. The gametes of the dwarf plant are all alike having small t alleles. When we do the Punnett square, we get a tall offspring, capital T, small t, another tall offspring, capital T, small t. We get a short offspring, small t, small t. And we get another short offspring that is small t, small t. So which means 50% of the offsprings are tall and 50% of the offsprings are dwarf. So which means that if on doing this cross, we receive offsprings which, dis uh, which display both tall and dwarf characteristics. Some of the offsprings are tall and some are dwarf. That means that the parent plant must have been a heterozygous plant. In option two, if we had, uh, we assume that the plant is homozygous uh, dominant, that is having a genotype capital T, capital T, its gametes would be capital T, capital T type. The other uh, parent's gametes would be small t, small t. And when we do the Pinnett square, we get again offsprings which are all tall right so when you get offsprings which are 100 percent tall that means that the parent plant had a homozygous genotype that is the parent plant was homozygous dominant 
So looking at the offsprings, we are able to go back and identify the genotype of the plant who's, uh, who displays a dominant character, but whose genotype is unknown. So that is how a test cross works. Let's take a few examples and solve them. Problem statements. Example one. In human beings, there are two alleles which determine the type of ear wax. The dominant allele is um, has a phenotype sticky ear, wa ear wax, while the uh, recessive allele gives dry ear wax. So now a man with a sticky ear wax marries a woman with a dry ear wax. So some of the children have sticky while some have dry ear wax. Then what is the genotype of the man? So let's start with uh, deciding our alleles. So the dry ear wax recessive phenotype which the woman displays, uh, let's call the alleles as small e. And so her genotype would be small e, small e because she is recessive. Her gametes will be small e, small e type. Now let's take the father. The father displays wet ear wax, which is a dominant phenotype, which means that for sure he has one dominant allele, which is capital E. The second allele is something which we do not know, which could be a capital E or a small e. So he could have a capital E small e or a capital E capital E genotype. So the gametes that he produces, for sure half of the gametes have capital E allele. The other half of the gametes is where we are unsure. From the question we know that some of the offsprings have wet and some of the offsprings have dry ear wax. So the dry ear wax uh, offsprings are cap, uh, small e, small e. The wet ear wax offsprings, we still do not know. So let's start our Punnett square. For the mother, we have small e, small e gametes. For the father in the test cross, uh, the mother is going to provide a small e allele to all the uh, offsprings. Now, for the father, we know for sure that one allele is capital E. So, when this capital E combines with the small e, you get children with wet earwax. Now, we also have from the question that there are some children which have dry earwax. So, these are the children who have dry earwax, dry being a recessive character, the genotype has to be small e, small e for them. So, which means that the other allele is small e for the father. So, which means that the genotype of the man is capital E, small e. And this is because in a test cross, if some of the offsprings have recessive phenotype, the parent in question is heterozygous. Let's take another example. The fruit fly Drosophila has two alleles for the uh, wing shape. The dominant allele results in long, wing, long wings and the recessive allele codes for the short wings. Now in a lab, we have a group of Drosophila which are all long winged flies. We don't know their genotypes. So when a test cross was performed with this group of flies and the short winged fly, all the offsprings had long wings. So what is the genotype of the long wing plant, uh, long wing uh, flies in the lab? So let's name our alleles. Um, say the recessive allele for short wing is denoted by small a and the dominant allele for long wing is denoted by capital A. So the fly with the short wing recessive phenotype has a genotype small a, small a and produces gametes small a, small a. The fly with uh, long wing types, long, uh, long wings has a genotype 
capital A, capital A, or capital A, small a. So, half of the gametes for sure has a capital A, but we do not know the other half of the gamete if it is whether it is capital A or small a. Now, from the question, we know that all the offsprings have long wings. We don't know the genotypes yet. Let's look at the Punnett square. From the first fly, we get the alleles small a, small a. From the next fly, we get one allele capital A. We still do not know what is the other allele. So we do a test cross and we get a long fly when this A and this A combine. We get another long winged fly when this A and this A combines. Now, this um, fly contributes small a, small a to the other uh, children as well. And these children have long wings. So, which means that they must have another dominant allele. Only then they will get long wings. So, for them to have long wings, the other allele has to be capital A, capital A, which means that the other allele up here is also capital A. So, that says that the genotype of the long fly, long winged fly, is capital A, capital A, or the flies, the original fly was a homozygous dominant fly. I hope that you have been able to understand test cross with these examples. Like we said in the beginning, if all the offsprings have dominant phenotype, the parent in question is homozygous dominant. So with this, we come to an end of this video. If you have any doubts or questions, please feel free to write them in the comment box and I shall respond to you. If you found the video useful, then please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.